This is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Tropical Cyclone Fina in what is soon to be Tropical Cyclone Grant just to the north of Darwin, Australia as of this Thursday, the 22nd of December. Starting with the latest official products from the Bureau of Meteorology, we are now dealing with what is officially Tropical Cyclone Fina, but the latest Tropical Cyclone forecast track shows that Fina will remain just off the coast of both New Caledonia and Queensland and the good news is that the storm is going to dissipate below cyclone status relatively soon. Meanwhile, the more ominous threat is pertaining to the tropical low located to the north of Darwin, and we still have cyclone watches in effect for much of the Northern Territory, and as we can see, the forecast really does not call for much in the way of any significant movement over the next few days, but gradual intensification into a Category 1 cyclone is forecast. So as we begin to take a closer look at Tropical Cyclone Fina on the latest enhanced infrared satellite animation, we can still make out that there is a lot of convection associated with this cyclone. But toward the last few frames, you can begin to make out that the surface circulation is becoming a little bit more exposed to the west. We can see this even better if we turn on the latest standard infrared. And toward the end, this circulation is beginning to move a little more toward the southwest while the convection is being blown off toward the east and this is a result of a lot of strong vertical wind shear. Here's another look at it on the color infrared and as we switch over to the water vapor floater here is the strong westerly winds funneling into the storm along with a lot of dry air. So the storm is playing out as it was forecast. We have a trough exiting Queensland and that is the main reason why the unfavorable conditions are present and nothing more than some isolated heavy rainfall is anticipated for New Caledonia and this storm will soon be history within the next 24 to 36 hours. As we begin to take a look at the latest 72 hour animation of precipitable water we can see that tropical cyclone Fina really became a lot more concentrated over the last 12 hours but what is also becoming more apparent is the increasing vorticity just off the coast of Darwin near the Tiwi Islands. The latest low level vorticity product shows both of our systems quite well and the vorticity max associated with that tropical low near Darwin is definitely becoming more apparent day by day. Furthermore, although a well-defined surface circulation still is not present, we can begin to make out the developing low pressure area as we turn to the latest radar sites from the Northern Territory, and we can definitely begin to make out the cyclonic spin just off the coastline. For more Australian radar mosaics, please go ahead and check out the weatherchaser.com. They have a wide array of weather information, including satellite imagery, for the entire continent. Moving on to the latest satellite animation, we see that the convection is still very abundant, but widely disorganized and elongated from west to east. So the system still is going to take quite some time to really begin to concentrate into one distinct low center. But as of right now, it looks as though the best low pressure area is located just to the north of the top end. And as we switch over to the water vapor, this is a very favorable environment. The system just needs a little bit more in the way of time to really get going. But once it does so, we are going to have to closely monitor this system in the event that the center stays well offshore or drifts more into the open waters of the Timor Sea because the upper level winds, along with the sea surface temperatures, does support the possibility of significant intensification. Here is another look at the wind shear profile courtesy of the University of Wisconsin. That upper level ridge is centered in the same general position as the surface low with wind shear values continuing to be lighter than 10 to 15 knots which is some cause for concern. Unfortunately the early morning model guidance is still in rather disagreement with one another. This is the latest 12Z run of the GFS forecast model and we see steady development just north of the top end before the system makes landfall just east of Darwin followed by a slow movement toward the east and eventually it's going back into the Gulf of Carpentaria and over the Cape York Peninsula. Based on the outline forecast track, the GFS is also indicating a heavy dose of precipitation across the northern tier of the top end and then this precipitation band extends eastward as the storm makes that turn more toward the east in the medium range. However, the latest run from the ECMWF is still indicating a completely different track in the short term. As we go into 24, 48, and 72 hours, there's not much in the way of any significant development just yet. But as we go into day 4 and day 5, it's becoming apparent that the cyclone is drifting west-southwest into the open waters of the Timor Sea. And as we go into day 6, you can't really make it out on this map but some of the higher resolution data available for the ECMWF to subscriber-based clients is showing a rather robust cyclone making landfall 
just to the southwest of Darwin, Australia, near Dundee Beach. Now, don't get overly carried away with this idea. Again, this forecast is still six days in advance. But nevertheless, the ECMWF is showing a solution that is contrary to what the GFS is outlining. A more westerly track would give this storm more time over water to become a significant cyclone under favorable upper-level conditions aloft. So therefore, all interest from the eastern half of the Kimberley Coast all the way into the Gulf of Carpentaria and the Cape York Peninsula are still advised to keep a very close watch on this system. In the medium range, the agreement between the GFS and ECMWF becomes a little bit better because as we can see, the European is still showing a turn more toward the southeast as we go into day 9 and day 10. Furthermore, the latest deterministic run from the ECMWF also appears to be in general agreement with its ensemble members. As we go into 96 and 120 hours, the ensemble average does generally take the system in a southwest heading. The latest low-level to mid-level steering analysis still shows a fairly strong western Australian ridge, which would seem to suggest the possibility of our tropical low drifting a little more toward the west over the next 48 hours. And as we switch back to the latest mid-level forecast from the ECMWF model, there again is the mid-level ridge. And then as we go into 24, 48, 72, and 96 hours, that ridge is still holding fairly steady along the western Australian coast. And as our tropical cyclone continues to intensify, it also begins to show up at the 500 hectopascal level. And as we go into day 5, and day 6, the ridge finally begins to break down, and that allows the cyclone to begin drifting back toward the south. But by this point, the model does have the storm located in the Timor Sea, so this overall would not be a fairly good solution for interest near Darwin, Australia. But again, this is an extended range forecast. And then as we go into day 7 and day 8, the troughing over Queensland really begins to amplify. So either way, it looks as though that this cyclone will eventually make a turn toward the southeast. It's just a matter of when. Additionally, as we turn to some of the other supplementary model guidance, beginning with the Canadian CMC, this is the forecast for day 5, and it's rather apparent that the tropical cyclone is well inland by this time. But the no-gaps model for the same time period shows the system a little bit more toward the west and just north of the Kimberley coastline. And the UK Met model forecast valid through 72 hours also seems to suggest that the more west-southwest motion in the short term is more likely. So just to summarize, it's still too early to tell exactly what this cyclone is going to do beyond the next 48 to 72 hours, but there is a chance that this system could become more than just a Category 1 cyclone. We'll just have to wait and see. In all interest, from the Kimberley Coast eastward through the Gulf of Carpentaria and Cape York Peninsula should keep up with the latest official products from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. I also want to just briefly mention that if you check out our main page at 28storms.com cyclone, you will not only find our daily tropical weather cyclone video updates, but also a wide array of weather-related content specifically geared toward Australian weather and tropical cyclone activity in the Indian Ocean and South Pacific. All of these links can be found on both the left and right-hand side of the page, and as we scroll down toward the lower end, you will also find several links regarding satellite and radar information for much of the region. So that wraps up your Australian cyclone update for now. Please stay tuned for more cyclone-related video updates, along with a brief video that will more than likely be posted to our YouTube channel fairly soon, and that is pertaining to the possibility of a weak tropical cyclone developing near Sri Lanka within the next four to six days.